Y'all be sure to stick to the end, because this last pick... Baby, it'll blow your mind. But these were my top 15 metal albums of February, and we're starting with Mithridatum and Harrowing. Featuring former members of Abhorrent and The Faceless, this dissonant black and death metal trio should be a welcome addition to listeners of the likes of Kralis, Goreguts, and Deathspell Omega. Several of you out there listed them as a strong recommendation early this month, and with the level of technicality on display, I can see why. And yet, despite the dizzying maelstrom of sound, harrowing never feels like style over substance. <laughs> Quite to the contrary, there is a very carefully orchestrated malevolence that keeps the otherwise chaotic drumming and atonal guitars from derailing into pretentiousness and off-putting noise. And true to its title, this album really does get under the skin and leaves me feeling genuinely distressed throughout its brisk 35-minute runtime. What that person on your tape has is a medical disorder. Next up is Man Must Die with the pain behind it all. I first became aware of these Scottish natives with the banger track Kill It, Skin It, Wear It, but they've been around since roughly 2002 and have toured with everyone from Hatebreed to Dying Fetus. The exact genre is difficult to nail down because depending on the song, I hear elements of Napalm Death, The Red Chord, and Decapitation. Not to mention they also throw in a few more melodic sections for good measure. <laughs> Regardless, the result is pretty interesting, if a little all over the place, but standout tracks for me were Patterns in the Chaos, In the Hour Before Your Death, and Bring Me the Head of the King. Definitely one of those underrated bands that more people should probably know about. Then we also have See You Next Tuesday with Distractions. <laughs> Another 2000s era band making a triumphant return for their first new album since 2008. Now just bring back Psyopus and the Red Chord and we'll have a full house. See you next Tuesday deliver on a very chaotic mix of mathcore, grindcore, and deathcore that should be very familiar to those who grew up with that scene, but will probably just sound like sheer madness to the newer listener. Glad to be unhappy, blast through 34 seconds like bullets from a firing squad while I'll never smile again sounds like the coming of the apocalypse. And the nightmarish qualities are only further amplified by the occasional industrialized electronics. But to me, all of this just feels like a good friend coming home. Oh, my sweet summer child. What do you know about fear? Next up, we have Insomnium with Anno 1696. <laughs> Insomnium's impeccable track record continues while also bringing some unique surprises along the way. Sakis Tolis of Rotting Christ makes an appearance on White Christ, but honestly, the guest feature that stole the show for me was Johanna Kerkella on God Forsaken, which also includes lush layers of distortion, acoustic sitar, and if I'm not mistaken, a saxophone? Meanwhile, Lillian and the Witch Hunter continue to step up the band's usual expert harnessing of both light and dark. <laughs> I'm also in love with Starless Paths, which even sports some pretty breathtaking backing corals, and Anno 1696 and the Rapids make for some of their most explosively cathartic intro and concluding tracks, respectively. Check out my tier list video to see where I ranked it within their larger discography. Then we have Eyes with Congratulations. <laughs> Copenhagen once more bringing some of the hardest hitting hardcore you can find. Underperformer was a surprise banger in 2020, and they only step up the abrasive violence with this follow-up, combining elements of Converge, The Armed, and The Jesus Lizard for some truly sardonic rebellion. Put on the title track Dull Boy and Bliss for just a sample of noisy, chaotic energy that is just dying for a mosh pit. The entire thing clocking in at a lean and mean 30 minutes of concentrated youthful angst and rebellion, just the thing to tear apart your local restaurant chain. Next up is Carnosis with Visions of Infinihility. Infinity 
Another strongly audience recommended album, this one perfect for you fans of the Black Dahlia murder in particular. Maybe throw in a bit of revocation for the more technical and thrashy influences, but this album could easily fit right alongside that discography, both in the stellar vocal performance to the graveyard atmosphere of their mellow death instrumentation. <laughs> It's dark and imposing with its dystopian concept, but also great fun for headbanging. Lots of shredding on display, but also plenty of groove to keep you moving. Thanks to those of you who put this underdog on my radar. Come on now, you guys! Then we have They Grieve with To Which I Bore Witness. When I was first getting into this space with written reviews, there was a now defunct Ottawa group called Alaskan that was one of my first underground loves. Out of the ashes of that band came They Grieve, combining that same churning sludge with haunting ambient music. Waves of distortion and despairing howls repeatedly crash you against the rocks, set against a backdrop of sorrowful soundscapes. The resulting effect is somehow both violent and tranquil at the same time. I feel like I'm listening to someone's final moments before the lights go out. Highly recommended for fans of Inter Arma and Neurosis. Next up is American Standards with Dopamine Dealer. <laughs> This is another one of those underground bands that takes me back to the earlier days of Metal Trenches. And with these three songs, they continue to amplify that gnarly, abrasive, early 2000s mathcore and metalcore energy of bands like Botch and The Chariot. Right down to the cover art, this just screams of that MySpace core energy I miss so much from my high school and college years. Opening the dealer with that sample from Que Sera Sera is such a perfect encapsulation of the energy that American standards like to bring to the table. And if you want more, they have plenty other content to explore on their Bandcamp page, or you can pair it with another EP in Ozaya with Kronos. This UK deathcore band has been kicking around somewhat in the shadows. Now given this doesn't quite reach the same levels for me as something like Brand of Sacrifice, but between the more technical riffing and raunchy bass tone of tracks like Elder King, I can't complain either. And goddamn does Ricky put 110% of his anger into these vocals. <laughs> With the right word of mouth, I could easily see Ozaya being brought up in the same circles as bands like Thy Artist Murder and Signs of the Swarm. Brutal vocals, dark atmosphere, punishing guitars, tight runtime, what more could you ask for? Then an album I knew I had to include or somebody in the comments would have had a brain aneurysm or something. We've got Sanguis Sugabog with Homicidal Ecstasy. More of an honorable mention for me, honestly, but I can see why people are enjoying this one. Plenty of infectious grooves and swampy atmosphere that seems to seep into your pores. Great drumming too, love that punchy snare tone. And a significant improvement over the last one, I would say. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would, especially A Lesson in Savagery, Narcissistic Incisions, and Mortal Admonishment. I just get a little bored with the lack of any sort of vocal variety, and the songwriting could be a little bit more original and memorable. I think it could be like three songs short or two, but tell me what you think of this band down below. I'm always really interested in having that conversation. But probably my favorite death metal release this month goes to Ulthar with Anthronomicon and Helionomicon. More chaotic, technically infused death metal for you this month with two new albums from these underground darlings. And while admittedly I was not as enthused with Helionomicon's approach with just two lengthy compositions, Anthronomicon gave me exactly what I wanted given my past love of Cosmovore and Providence. The latter is a delightful explosion of blast beats, cacophonous riffing, and cavernous snarls. And with plenty of ups and downs and sudden changes to prevent the listener from ever truly getting a stable footing. Ulthar may still be in their relative infancy, but they seem determined to claw their way to the top. Next up, we have To the Grave with Director's Cuts. <laughs> Kiss the truth and push lies and kill
Now, while so many have been singing the praises of Distant this month, this is the deathcore album I was most looking forward to and after falling in love with global warming in 2019. And they continue to deliver on the same promise of punchy, infectious grooves and varied vocals that should appeal to fans of Darko. Not to mention plenty of flavor touches to give each song its own memorable moments. <laughs> We're talking fun little mathcore inspired riffs and even the occasional blast of more symphonic elements as on full sequence. And once more, I can't say enough great things about Dane Evans' dynamic vocal performance, seeming to hit every possible technique at least once on ragers like BDTS, Acts of Kindness, and Red Dot Sight. Another kind of out of nowhere release this month, we have Divided by Design with the Fear of Being Forgotten. If you dig animals as leaders, you're going to want to check out Divided by Design. This is that breed of instrumental progressive music where the guitars do more than enough of the talking to make up for the lack of vocals. And not only are the standard instruments on point, we also get some really awesome implementation of piano, strings, and brass. Tons of styles on display here too, with elements of funk, jazz, gent, classical, prog, and really everything in between, with more than a few passages absolutely blowing my top off without coming off as overly showy either. Just four tracks here, but each might as well be three or more given their approach to songwriting, and they have a pretty active YouTube channel you can check out as well. Next up is Dragon Corpse with the Dracoth Saga. <laughs> One of the more interesting albums to hit my recommendations this month, the aptly named Dragon Course is a unique fusion of power metal and deathcore. I'll admit that the spoken word sections are a little over the top, but then again, that was also the case for Warcraft, which I remember fondly for its camp. Black Cat has assigned you to an outpost in the swamps of sorrow. Regardless, this feels like the perfect music for your next D&D session, bringing both fun fantasy melodrama and that heavy to bang your head to. At 24 minutes, it's also a low investment, but also enough to get me interested to see how this project evolves and matures moving forwards. And then easily, my favorite metal album of February goes to Hell Ripper with Warlocks Grim and Withered Hags. <laughs> Black and Thrash continues to be my favorite style of thrash and Hellripper out here once again showing how it's done for the new blood. This is some truly wicked stuff filled with wailing solos, chugging triplets, and hellish snarls, and made even more impressive when remembering that this is all the singular work of Scottish musician James McBain. <laughs> Tracks like I the Deceiver, The Hissing Marches, and Goat Vomit Nightmare are pure, unadulterated headbang frenzies of punky D-beats, motorhead hooks, maiden-esque harmonies, and rumbling bass grooves that never fail to put a smile on my face. While others like the Knuckle of A also tie in some mellow death sounding riffs a la Dissection, combined with the occult and satanic imagery, it makes for a devilishly good time. Sacrilicious. Y'all check out this playlist for my rankings of In Flames, Insomnium, and New Godsmack. Ugh. And as always, let me know down in the comments what were your favorite metal albums of this month. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.